I want to begin with a question today. Have you noticed that the best things in life are only achieved through hard work? I mean, why do so many good things require so much hard work? Having a healthy body is hard work. Come on, losing weight. Why is it easier to pick it up than it is to take it off? Come on, somebody. Why, why Lord? That's why there's one million weight loss programs. You know what I'm saying? There's South Beach, Up Beach, Down Beach, every beach. You know what I'm saying? Eating healthy is hard work. There's fast food everywhere. Fried, fried food is everywhere. Come on, I saw it everywhere when I was fasting. Come on, somebody. It was, it was everywhere. Exercising. It's hard work. Getting on a budget. Staying on a budget. It's hard work. Tiffany and I, a couple of weeks ago, we did our 2024 budget. Man, that's hard work. I mean, keeping the house clean with kids is hard work. You, some of you with small kids, you think, oh, it's just because they're small. No, when they grow up, it's hard work. How many know that relationships are hard work? Having a good marriage is hard work. Tiffany and I have been married for over 26 years. We've had great seasons, and we've had some bad seasons. It's hard work to be married a long time. It's even harder to be married a long time and to have a God-honoring marriage. It's hard work. Parenting is hard work. It's a lot of work to raise kids who love the Lord in such a crazy world. Having relationships with some of your family members is hard work. Come on, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You got some, maybe it's your grandparents or, or some uncles or some aunts or some cousins or some in-laws. Come on, you just nod at me, wink at me. Come on, you know, it's hard work. Dating is hard work. Friendships are hard work. It's a lot of work to have good friendships. It's work. Just look at your neighbor. Come on, right now, look at your neighbor and tell them, you're a lot of work. Would you tell them that right now? Yeah, you are a lot of work. Yeah. Now, now look at your second choice and look at your second choice and say, I didn't talk to you first, child, because you're double the work. Yeah, you want to tell him, yeah. Yeah, you're double the work. You're a lot of work, child. And because relationships are so hard, a lot of people have given up on them. I I'm talking about Christian people have given up on relationships. I hear Christians say things like, I love God, but I don't do anything with God's people. I don't have much to do with God's people. That They think they're just fine all by themselves. They say things like, well, I'm better off in life if I just spend time with me, myself, and I. All I need is me and Jesus. Me and Jesus are a good team. Me and Jesus are good enough. I don't need anyone else. But church, here's the interesting thing. The first problem in the Bible was not a sin problem. It was a solitude problem. In Genesis chapter number one, when God created the earth, he said, it is good six times. Once, he even said, it is very good. Everything God created was good. And before sin ever entered the world, God said there's one thing that wasn't good. And you see it there in Genesis chapter number two and verse number 18. It said, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. The man had God as his best friend. Adam lived in a perfect environment. There was no sin in the earth, but God knew that he wired the man for relationship. And that's not just true for Adam. That's true for you and for me. It's true for every human being. We all need relationships. It's not good for us to be alone. Because when we get alone, our mental health declines. Worry, stress, depression, anxiety, all increase when we live isolated lives. It's not good for us to be alone because people who have friendships live longer. You want a longer life? Get you some good friendships. It's not good for us to be alone because the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of your relationships. I'm an introvert. I don't require a lot of friends. 
But my personality type doesn't negate the truth of God's word that I need friendships. And my friends, they mean the world to me. My, my life is richer because of the relationships I have, not only with my wife and with my kids, but with my friends. I, I thank God for my small group. I thank God for my friends. And church, no matter your personality type, you need friendships. You need relationships. And here's what I want to do today. I want to talk to you about Ruth and her friendship with Naomi. In Ruth chapter number 1 and verse 3 through 6, the Bible lets us know that Naomi and her husband, they had two sons. And Naomi's husband, he died, and she was not a single mom with two sons. And her sons ended up marrying Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. Ten years later, the two sons died. Ruth and Naomi, Orpah, they had some great reasons on why they should not maintain their friendship. And here's what I want to do. I want us to glean some insight from this story of Ruth and Naomi. I want to give you three things that keep you, keep you from owning and maintaining and building your friendships. Three things that will keep you from building and maintaining your relationships. Write this down, all my note takers, write this down. Here's the first one that will keep you from owning and building your relationships. Number one is pain. Naomi and Ruth and Orpah were experienced intense grief and emotional pain due to the loss of their husbands. I can only imagine their grief. Naomi has now lost her husband, and now she's lost her two sons. Ruth and Orpah have lost their husband, and they've lost their brother-in-law. And if there was ever people who had a legitimate excuse to isolate themselves, to avoid relationships, it was these three women. Church, pain has a way of driving us into isolation. When you're hurting, you tend to hide. And when you're in pain, you know what people do? They come to church late, dash out right when service is over. They want to avoid everybody. And if you're not careful, pain will drive you away from the relationships you need the most. Even when you and I are in pain, it's not good for us to be alone. Let me give you the second one. Write this down. Problems. Problems. Naomi, Ruth, Orpah's world it was turned upside down when their husbands died. They didn't just lose their husbands, but they also lost their income. These men worked and provided for their families, and these ladies didn't know how they were going to buy food. They didn't know how they were going to pay the bills. They had some serious problems. And when people are overwhelmed with problems, you know what happens? They tend to pull away from their friendships. They tend to pull away from their relationships. They isolate themselves. Question, have you isolated yourself because of your problems? You're tired. You're weary. You're overwhelmed. Maybe you're even a little embarrassed. And you just don't want to deal with people. But God's word says it's not good for you. To be alone. Let me give you this third one. Let me give you the third one. We've got pain. We've got problems. Number three is people. I know Ruth's mother-in-law. I know she wasn't perfect. Naomi wasn't perfect. She made some mistakes in their relationship. Maybe one time Naomi crossed the line and she started meddling in Ruth's marital tension with her husband, trying to help her baby boy out. Maybe one year Naomi forgot to buy Ruth a birthday gift. I I'm sure Ruth had some good reasons on why she shouldn't maintain a relationship with Naomi now that her husband was dead. Here's what I've learned. One of the biggest reasons we don't build or maintain relationship with people is because people are flawed. How many of you know people will hurt you? People will frustrate you? People will get on your nerves. People will irritate you. They'll make you mad. How many know people can be goofy and unreliable? Lift your hand if you know any weird people. Come on, lift, lift your hand if you know any weird people. Anybody know any weird people? Come on, everyone, okay, lift your hand if you know some weird people. Yeah, if you didn't lift your hand, do you know why? 
Uh, that's another sermon. I ain't got time to preach that one today. That's another one. Some of you today are not owning your relationships because you're sick and tired of people. You don't have any close friends because people have hurt you. You're not getting connected at people's church because someone disappointed you or broke your trust. And even though people can be weird and goofy, God says this, it's not good for you to be alone. You still need People, pain has driven you away from people. Problems have driven you away from people. People have driven you away from people. Let me quickly give you four lessons you learn from Ruth on how to own your friendships in the middle of pain, problems, and people. Four lessons, four lessons. Here's the first lesson, press through pain. Press through pain. And I just want to share a verse of scripture, several verses of scripture from Ruth chapter number one. If you have your Bible, just open it up. Ruth chapter number one, verse number eight says this. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. And these two daughter-in-laws were pressing through some unbelievable pain. As they wept aloud, they were crying loud and said, we want to go with you. And to own your friendships, you'll have to press through pain. Let me tell you something about life. Pain is unavoidable. You will have personal pain. You will have people pain, but even when you're going through pain, you're going through physical, emotional, or mental pain, you need relationships. When your heart is broken, when you're grieving, when you're hurting, you need relationships. People will disappoint you. People will let you down. People will get on your nerves. People will make you mad, but you need relationships. After 21 years of pastoring People's Church, and dealing with all, all types of people. All types of people. I've learned to develop thick skin and yet maintain a tender heart. Church, I refuse to become jaded towards people or to stop loving people, or to stop believing the best about people, or to stop building relationship with people. Listen, church, you have to press through pain to own your relationships because it's not good for us to be alone. Number two, write this down, write this down. You got to be committed. You got to be committed. Let's go back to this story and, and Ruth Chapter number one, let's pick up that next verse in verse number 11. It says this, but Naomi said, so the girls say, o Orpah and Ruth say, we want to go with you. And, but Naomi responded back and she said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? She said, I'm old. Verse 12, return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me. Even if I had a husband tonight and then gave, gave birth to some, to some sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. Ruth, Orpah said, I, 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 I heard enough. I think I'm gone. But, but Ruth clung to, Na to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it so ever, ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When, on, na when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Now, Orpah 
was like. You old, you're not getting married, you ain't got no more children. Even if you did, be, I'm not waiting. And she said, I, peace. I'm trying to get married in a year or two and have me some kids. And I don't blame her. They were all in pain. And Naomi was bitter. But Ruth, the scripture says, clung to Naomi. She was committed to her even though it was a tough season. When we own our relationships, we are committed during good seasons, and we're committed during bad seasons. Church, relationships are hard work. Marriage is hard work. Parenting is hard work. Family relationships are hard work. Church relationships are hard work. Friendships are hard work. So God-honoring relationships require a clinging. They require being committed to one another. We have to be committed to one another when we are offended. Be committed when someone disagrees with us. Be committed when you see someone's humanity. You get close enough to people, you'll see their humanity. They have flaws. They have their issues. Be committed even though they have somebody has a different culture or a different perspective than you. Be committed let me say this for 2024. Be committed even during the upcoming election season. I, I've seen people walk away from their own family over an election. They leave their friends. They leave their church. Oh, God, may we have the character of Christ and be committed to our relationships. May we be a church that has the love of God and that has a clinging heart. It reminds me of what Paul says to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians chapter number four and verse number two. He says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing. Everybody shout bearing. We need more of that in the church. Bearing with one another in love. Ruth models this for us so well. Naomi was bitter. She was even a little angry at God. She told Ruth multiple times to leave. Go back to your people. I don't need you in my life. Go back to your people. But Ruth was patient with her. She was bearing with her. Relationships aren't all about us. It's not always about what we can get out of the relationship. Sometimes it's about what we can give. It's about how we can be there for someone when they're hurting and, and they're bitter, they're struggling, they're, they're lonely, they're confused, they're scared, we're angry, we're like, we're, I'm going to be there for you. You have to make up in your mind, you're going to bear with people. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13 says, bear, come on, shout it one more time, bear. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance, Against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Bearing with people will require you to forgive them. People will hurt you. They'll disappoint you. They'll let you down. But we're called to forgive and to bear with each other. Just look at your neighbor and just say this to him. I guess I'll put up with you a little longer. Go ahead and tell him. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess the way pastor's preaching, I, I'll put it with you another month or two. Number three, number three, number three, number three. Let me tell you how we own it. Let me tell you how, you how we own it. Number three, have realistic expectations. Realistic expectations. We can learn so much from Ruth about having realistic expectations as we examine her relationship with Naomi. Think about this. Ruth knew Naomi was bitter. She knew she was angry with God. She knew Naomi didn't want to get remarried. Naomi told her. She knew she didn't want to have any more children. She knew Naomi was relocating. She knew their relationship would look different now that her husband and Naomi's son was dead. I'm sure she knew that when she got remarried to another man, it could create some challenges in their relationship. Ruth had some realistic expectations when she said to Naomi, I'm going to cling to our relationship. I'm going to go with you. She was committed to their friendship during this new season. And one of the reasons people stop owning their relationships is because so many people have unrealistic expectations. Do you have unrealistic expectations? See, unrealistic expectations lead to frustration. 
Unchecked frustration leads to people not owning their relationships. Let me give you some realistic expectations about people. I'm going to set somebody free today. Let me give you some realistic expectations about people. Number one, number one, number one. Write this down. People are crazy. That's number one. Number two, people are crazy. No, come on. All of us got some crazy in us. All of us. If you don't think you're crazy, you're doubly crazy. Come on, somebody. Everybody got a little crazy. Some crazy behavior, some crazy habits, some crazy routines. Every night before I go to bed, I fluff my pillow. I shake it. I push it. I fluff it. I put the pillowcase. If you watch me, you're like, what is wrong with pastor? I'll be working that pillow over, church. <laughs> crazy habits, crazy behaviors. I order the same thing at restaurants. Anybody else like me, you go, yeah, I'm predictable. I go to the restaurant. I know what I'm going to get. Some of y'all are like, can I see the menu? I don't, why you got, I don't need a menu. I know what I want. I'm not adventurous, church. I'm calculated. I know I like it. I'm going to get it. Huh? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You have to understand that about people. There's some people just crazy. Here's the second thing you have to know about people, to have realistic expectations. People will hurt you and disappoint you. Like if you think otherwise, you have unrealistic ex expectations about people. Here's what I've learned about people that I think will help you have the right expectations of them. Hear this, church. Most people have good hearts but bad practices. Most people were never taught or never saw model for them in a healthy way how to deal with trauma, how to deal with pain, how to deal with loss, how to deal with grief, disappointment, setbacks, and anger. So they react in a way that isn't helpful for them and isn't helpful for their relationships. You got to know that about people. Good hearts, bad practice. Your mom and them taught you some crazy stuff. I don't know no better. I can tell you don't know no better because they ain't working for you, but you don't know no better. And let, me, let me help you have realistic expectations about people. Here's the third one. Relationships go through different seasons. So you have to show grace, love, and commitment through every season of life. Ruth and Naomi, they were going through a new season. And Ruth said, even though we're going through a new season, I'm committed to you. I'm clinging to you. I'm giving, giving our relationship a, a, a commitment, an unwavering commitment. I'm sticking by you, church. You have to have unrealistic expectations or you won't build and own your relationships. You won't maintain them. You won't own them. You won't build them. Here's the fourth point I want to give you today, this last point. Number four, God's plan for your life is connected to people. God's plan for your life is connected to people. One of the amazing things about this story, and really the story of the Bible, is when people stay connected to people, they fulfill God's plan for their life. And because Ruth stayed committed and connected to Naomi, and she went with her to her homeland. The Bible says that Ruth met a man named Boaz. Mm, that's another sermon. Because somebody's looking for their Boaz. But I'm not preaching it today. She met a man named Boaz. They got married and had a son named Obed. Who had a son named Jesse. Who had a son named David the man after God's own heart, who had a son named Solomon, who was the wisest man who ever lived. 28 generations after David, our Messiah, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords was born. Jesus Christ was born through the lineage of Ruth and Boaz because Ruth clung to Naomi and met her Boaz because God's plan for her life was connected to people. And God's plan for your life is always connected to people. It's not good for you to be alone because you can't live out God's purpose for your life all by yourself. Even Jesus needed people to fulfill his purpose. Jesus chose 12 disciples, 12 close friends to do life with. Jesus knew his purpose was connected to people. I wonder how many of you today are missing out on God moments. You're missing out on God opportunities, open doors, your divine destiny and purpose because you're not connected and committed to people. You need people to fulfill your God 
God-given purpose. I always like to preach to your Mondays, not just to your Sundays. So I'm going to give you three quick applications, just really quick. Three quick applications of today's message. Number one, be committed to your family. Be committed to your family. Own it. Stop waiting on your family. You own it. Love your family. Build relationships. Invest. Well, they're not doing it. No, you own it. Invest. Forgive. Work through the problems. Don't wait on them. You own it. Own your parenting. Own your relationship with your kids. Own your marriage. Own it. Well, you don't know what they did. Own it. Stop blaming. Stop it. Own it. I'm clinging. It's not always easy. Tiffany and I have had dark days. Own it. We're in this thing till death do us part. She might have to kill me, but I, I'm not going nowhere. Own it. Get signed up for the marriage conference on February 25th. Somebody, ah, I've been married a long time. I don't, I don't, we don't need no marriage conference. Own it. Stop blaming. Stop making excuses. Own it. Be here with Tiffany and I for the marriage conference. Invest in your marriage. Own it. Second application. Be committed to your friends. Own it. Love your friends. Build relationships. They're going to get on your nerves. Build relationships. Invest in them. Forgive them. Own it. Well, pastor, I don't really have any friends to be committed to. Own it. Go make you some friends. Well, I just can't find them. Initiate it. Get in a small group. Own your relationships. Own it. Here's the third one. Here's the third one. Here's the third one. Third application. Be committed to your church family. Be committed. Own it. Love your church family. Build relationships. There's no perfect church. If you're looking for it, you're not going to find it. You got to say, I'm going to be committed. I'm going to invest. I'm going to build relationships. I'm going to forgive them. Own it. Own it. Well, pastor, I don't know anybody at the church. I just can't make no friends. No, own it. Get in a small group. Stay after church today. Get you a donut or two. Talk to some people. Own it. Well, pastor, the church is just too big. No. No, you just got to own it. Have initiative. There's a small group that's for you. You got to own it. You got to own it. Lead a small group. I can't do that. They don't have any small groups for what I want to do. Start it. Go to training today after the service. Go to the People's Church website. Click on small groups. Your finger's not broke. If it is, use the other finger. Sign up for a training. Start a small group. Own it. Everybody get in a small group. Own it. Because it's not good for you to be alone. The key verse for this series, I close with it. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to work it out. Heavenly Father, thanks for your word. Thanks for your presence. Thanks for your anointing. Thanks for speaking to people. Thanks for having your way. Thanks for breathing on people. Thanks for strengthening our relationships, our family, our friends, our church. I thank you that people are going to own it in Jesus' name. I pray as eyes are still closed and heads are bowed at every location. You're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. At every location, you're away from God. Maybe you're mad at God because things haven't turned out. You've lost a loved one. It's been a sickness. It's been a difficult time and you're mad at God. You're bitter. You're, you're confused about God because of how people treated you or how a church treated you or how people treated you and you thought that was God. No, don't confuse God with people. No, God loves you. He's a perfect God. He's a loving God. He's a good heavenly father. Maybe you don't like God because we talk about him as a father, but your father wasn't there for you so you confuse your, your earthly father with your heavenly father. No, God's a good father. He's a perfect father. He wants to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness today. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're away from Jesus. You're, you're not serving Jesus. I'm going to count to three. I want you to shoot your hand up high in the air, and I want to lead you in a prayer to know Jesus today. If you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, today is your day. Come home. Cling to Jesus. Commit to Jesus. Don't keep living your way. Come home today. He loves you. 
As I count to three, shoot your hand in the air. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. Today's your day to be made right with God. One, two, three. Just lift it high now. Pastor, that's me. I see your hand there. See your hand there. See your hand there. So awesome. See your hand there. See your hand there. Come on, Edmund, just lift it high. Come on, Midwest City, lift it high. Northwest, lift it high. Online, just click the raise your hand button or right in the chat line. That's me. That's me. Come on, somebody else today. This is your moment to be made right with God. Just lift your hand high. Lift your hand high. Lift your hand high. Someone else today. I'm waiting on you. Is there someone else today? So awesome. So awesome. See your hand there. I'm going to ask every hand that's raised to pray this prayer with me. Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. God's going to wash away your sins. Pray with me now. Heavenly Father, I turn away from my sin, and I turn my life over to Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins, and that today my life is forgiven, and I will follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.